Turn left.
are describing as inadequate. Yeah, so, so for example, I went to the Port of Brooklyn, which is like 25 minutes from my house, and it's a lot of complex psychiatric needs. So when they actually needed complex psychiatric help, the community members are actually mentioned.
it depends. I mean, if Like, like for me, because I had a complex neck heart issue, it made sense to address the complex neck heart issue first and then address the transport second. Um, but that was just me. And, and, well, and that does sound, sound pretty similar to, 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 to one element of what Louis Cass is concluding. Rachel, thank you. I, we may talk again when you've read more of it. I don't know what, what, where this conversation is, is going. The time now is 11 hours. On your radio, on Global Player, and... LBC. Leading Britain's conversation. This is LBC. From Global's Newsroom, the Prime Minister has told LBC the situation in Gaza is becoming increasingly intolerable. Rishi Sunak's comments follow President Biden's warning that Benjamin Netanyahu is making a mistake in his approach to the war. Mr Sunak's told LBC he's been very clear his Israeli counterpart needs to do more. I spoke to the Prime Minister just the other week, insisting on more aid crossings being opened. Now, that has happened, actually.
but of course that is a contribution to a conversation about something a bit different from the
That sounds like a full-time job. Sir.
when we don't understand things. Somebody says, I am a transgender man, I am a transgender woman, and we feel threatened in, in, in some way in ourselves by that, because what's, what made you negative towards it, do you think? It can't be just confusion, because confusion's not a negative force. Yeah, uh, I think, you know, I was never, I was never anti, but okay. I, I, you know, I, I, I certainly, I, I was very really sceptical, I was doubtful. And when you don't understand things, you, you try to rationalise them potentially in a negative way. Uh, and the, the big thing for me is I, I, I challenge why I think we're uh, and, and it kind of boils down to a lack of understanding. Uh, parallels there and I think Scott's probably right that resolution or improvement in the situation for, for everybody but particularly for these children probably involves paying a little bit less attention to them. I don't know if that's, 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 that's but yeah there must be a way to protect it
So bear that in mind when I tell you that the government released the current technology
Option final payment of 7965. Indemnities may be required. This one's for the fed up. This one's for the hot and stuffy. This one's for everyone who thought they couldn't have aircon in their apartment or listed building. Because you can. For years, Call You have supplied and installed fully internal aircon systems with no mess, no fuss, and no external condenser. So head to callyou.london today before the summer's here. Call You. Free banking on everyday transactions when you open a startup account or switch to NatWest Business Banking, backed by the current account switch guarantee. So join the hundreds of thousands of businesses across the UK who are already pushing ahead. Tomorrow begins today with NatWest, proud partner of Team GB. Search NatWest Business. Turn over under 1 million for startup, under 2 million for switch. Standard tariff thereafter. Switches must use the current account switch service. Can't transfer another NatWest Group business account. Other fees and criteria may apply. James O'Brien. Alexa, send a comment to LBC. 11.51 is the time. You're listening to James O'Brien on LBC. And uh, is this a genie that we can actually get back in the bottle? Talking about smartphones and under-16s accessing, specifically under-16s accessing social media. Um, Philly Boots, John's in Croydon. John, what do you want to say? Morning, James. Hello, John. James, when I was about 17 or so, I tried to sign up to some betting apps, and there were some lads in the sixth form who were gambling, and we, I thought they wanted to join in. Mm. To try and do that, you needed to link your phone with your bank account, you yeah. needed to have um, a picture next to some sort of photo ID, like a passport or something, not like um, your library card or something yeah. like that. <laughs> yes, um, yes. And, and it was incredibly hard to the point that I couldn't do it. And then if you had to then re-log in to use some sort of similar verification system that is already employed by betting companies, so it's not like we're just coming up with it out of nowhere, um, and just apply it to Facebook. I mean, they've got, when, when they want to, they're incredibly clever. And I don't know if you know, but on the government website, recently had to do a uh, DV, uh, DVS check. If you remove the case of your phone and hold it up to your passport, it will scan it and take the picture and every other bit of information necessary straight to your iPhone. So, with this sort of technology that the government and people already have in place, I mean, if you can't... You'd think like it would be easy. I mean, to be honest, we're coming at this from similar angles. You, you are a former 17-year-old who struggled to get onto a gambling website, so n- neither of us are what you might call tech broskies or, or Silicon Valley experts, but I'm persuaded by what you're reminding me of, and I, 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 I'm pretty sure there are other areas. It's incredibly easy to access pornography online. I wouldn't know, James. No, nor, nor would I. I'm just, this is what I've read. And, uh, and I'm pretty sure it used to be, it used to be more difficult. I could be wrong, but you put, you can put an age limit on a gambling website, therefore you can put an age limit on a pornography website, and therefore you can put an age limit on a social media website. To prove your age online is probably not as difficult as some people like us to think. I also think, so when I was 13, tried to sign up to um, social media, that was about when it was first coming out, and um, I think you couldn't be on there till you say, like, 15 or 16. So you fail at 19, my birthday's 98, so if yeah. I put in 98, oh, fail. So you just change it. Like 7, 6, yeah. 5, oh, brilliant. Yeah. I'm now allowed on. And that, it's got to be something a bit better than that, I'd say. Yeah, me too. I like your contribution as well, for two reasons. It's quite straightforward, and it's... Just thinking based on experience. But I'm interested in thinking that's not even based on experience. This genie can be, I think this genie can be got back in the bottle. I think, I don't owe Esther Jai an apology because I certainly wasn't rude about her, but I am feeling my oil tanker, (laughs) I'm feeling my oil tanker turn. 
Uh, we sit there. Sometimes you think because something exists and it's become so embedded and it's so commonplace, you think, no, we can't possibly do things differently. That's why I reach for the smoking ban or, or the compulsory safety belts in cars. Things that you never would have thought. Can you think of other examples? You can text them to me, actually, 84850, or indeed uh, you can WhatsApp them these days. If, if that is, is that helpful to talk about WhatsApp at this point in this conversation? Is that, is that social media, WhatsApp? It is, isn't it? So you shouldn't... Oh, 03456060973 is the number that you need. I, I just meant, you know, here we are. Delighted to be able to accept WhatsApp to the programme while talking about the dangers and the horrors of social media. But we're all we're all grown ups here, allegedly. So, I, I, what else would you put on that list? What, what, what else would you put on the list of things that seemed impossible when they were first suggested? But actually happened, and now it's all fairly straightforward. Thank you very much. Paul's in Stratford upon Avon. I'm, I'm due there soon, Paul. I've got a, I've got a b- book gig coming up. But I digress. What made you pick up the phone? Yeah, we'll pop into our shop anytime. Oh, well. <laughs> so we're we're in uh, yeah we're in the centre of Stratford. So yeah, I mean my background's um, web development. And um, we've had quite a lot of experience with social platforms. And I think that the topic of underage, anyone under 16, getting access to these social features has always been a bit of a concern for us, especially through TikTok. Um, I mean, I I, I should probably um, highlight some of the things that the previous caller was saying, which is exactly what what we think. The quick fix is really um, an uh, an ID process before sign up um my my how long my would it take you to is, code that well facebook could implement that yeah but you know they probably already had that that type of system within within their ecosystem and what would anyway. i need to prove that because some people would get through it but the the the, the 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 efficacy of the idea would be judged by how many people didn't how how, how what would i need for example to to get in well, what's the first thing that you get, identification you get at 16 is probably a national bank account. National insurance number. Yeah, exactly. National insurance number, bank account, um, first bank account. It would be, pre- I think that the reason why these social platforms don't want to actually um, enforce something like that is because it's all about active user base through their platform. Yeah. The more active users they've got, the more advertising space that they can essentially sell to to certain people. But um, I think the absolutely most horrific thing was when I was investigating TikTok in terms of uh, whether or not it's going to be suitable for our business marketing. And as a um, male signing up to TikTok on multiple accounts, I was actually horrified how many, how much of the content delivered to me was essentially kids in school uniform, young girls, and you read the comments in there and there's just grotesque stuff from guys saying, hey, you look pretty, this, that and the other. So there's a massive, um, uh, you know... So they'd take a hit commercially if if they got rid of a lot of what are essentially their, their, their customers or their users. Yeah, I mean, TikTok, you know, way so back when, as a, as about a, a dancing app. Yeah, no, as a, as, a, as a web developer, you think it could be done really, really easily? Yeah. Well, I do too now. I do too now. I mean, let's hear arguments from people in the sector who don't want to do it really easily. Or, I mean, maybe there is a more complicated reason as to why it shouldn't happen. You know, a Facebook group for your gymnastics club or or, or your your, your stamp collecting club or something and children being excluded from that would be... Even I can't pretend that this is a powerful argument, but that, 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 that is another reason to give Brianna Jai... To give Esther Jai, forgive me, to give Esther credit is is that you know she comes out and she says I want to ban all under sixteens from social media from accessing social media and we all go oh, don't be ridiculous you might as well try and get the toothpaste back in the tube uh, and actually if you stop and think about it and as we've demonstrated with the first two callers speak to people uh, certainly in Paul's case uh, who who know what they're talking about from inside the industry or with the previous caller who've experienced as we all have from outside the industry the the the, the real difficulty of logging on to site opening a, ba- a a gambling account how hard is it to open a gambling account why is it much easier to get onto social media when the dangers posed by social media to children are probably greater in total than the dangers posed by gambling it's a question you might want to have a crack at answering. 0345 60973 is the number you need. And it, it doesn't matter if there are flaws in the suggestions. All that matters is whether or not it would massively, exponentially improve the current situation. On your radio, 
on Global Player and Play LBC. Leading Britain's conversation. This is LBC. From Global's newsroom at midday, the Prime Minister has defended the decision de- the decision not to block weapons sales to Israel. Rishi Sunak's told LBC the government has an obligation to follow legal advice, which leaves the UK's, unposi- the UK's position unchanged. He's been facing growing pressure on the issue after the deaths of seven aid workers in Israeli strikes. Mr Sunak's described the situation in Gaza as increasingly intolerable humanitarian suffering that people are experiencing isn't right and the Prime Minister Netanyahu needs to do more to alleviate so that. Are we I'm, weapons to I made that it? very clear to him. So we have a long established process which actually the Foreign Secretary David Cameron was talking about in detail yesterday and we review these things regularly according to a, a very clear process that that happens periodically as it has happened recently and that's led to no change. Three people have been charged with public order offences following a protest outside Sakir Starmer's home. A pro-Palestinian demonstration took place outside the Labour leader's property in North London yesterday. Two women and a man are due to appear at Westminster Magistrates Court. The Prime Minister has told LBC that efforts to tackle retail crime will make a significant difference. Assaulting a shop worker is to be made a specific criminal offence in England and Wales. It'll carry the same sentence as the existing offence of common assault. The Shadow Home Secretary, Yvette Cooper, says Labour's been pushing for the change for a decade. They've finally done a U-turn on one of the measures that we've called for because they know that otherwise they would lose a vote in Parliament in a couple of weeks on it about having stronger protection for shop workers. They're not actually putting the police in the town centres to be able to take action. Rishi Sunak has also told LBC he wants to make progress before calling a general election. He's again refused to put a date on a vote, saying his working assumption is still the second half of the year. And England's Rachel Daly has announced her retirement for international football. The 32-year-old, who plays for Aston Villa, made her final appearance in last night's 2-1 win in Ireland. She earned 84 caps, winning Euro 2022 and reaching last year's World Cup final. In the city, the FTSE 100 a short time ago was up for. 46 points at 79.80. The pound buys 1 euro 16 and a dollar 26. LBC weather with Ripple Energy. Part owner wind farm and take control of your energy. Wet and windy weather moving across the UK from the west. Uh, some places still seeing some bright spells though. A high of 15 Celsius from Global's newsroom for LBC. I'm Thomas Watt. Football crazy kids in your life? Little can help with that. Do they team talk at meals and know their step over from their scorpion kick? Then this is your chance to win them the ultimate football experience with Little Plus. To walk hand in hand onto the pitch with their heroes at UEFA Euro 2024 as part of the Little Kids team. Download the Little Plus app for a chance to win their dream today. Little, we're on your team. End 17th of April, 18 plus, GB residents only, child age 6 to 10, valid passports and Little Plus app required. T's and C's apply. See little.co.uk forward slash mascots. This is LBC from Global, leading Britain's conversation with James O'Brien. You're not really producing the good so far on um, uh, coming up with things that we that, that seemed impossible because the challenges seemed so great, and then actually, when somebody found the political will to do it. It, it became quite... Well, it, it happened. It actually happened. Um, and all we've got so far are the ones I came up with, which were safety belts becoming compulsory in cars, and I suppose you could add car seats to that list, and, and the smoking ban. Karen has sent me the words, streakers at rugby. Does anyone want to have a crack at... If you pardon the pun. Does anyone want to have a go at working out what Karen is talking about there? Is it... Did they ban... I, Streakers are. I mean, has she texted the wrong radio program? Is this meant for somebody else, or is she listening on catch up to something that happened in the small hours of the morning? Why would Why would Karen text me streakers at rugby? I do. I, I do not know. But I, I'm beginning to think. The more we talk about it, actually, sometimes I say to you, the more I think about it. Like I spend my life with my. Uh, you know, my, what is it you do? You put your, you're a bit like Michael Barrymore back in the day, you put your fist on your forehead and you go, is it the thinker? It's the thinker, isn't it? Yeah, it's, it's, it's not Bruce Forsyth, it's, it's Rodan or someone like that. You, you put, you, I spend my life like that, thinking about things, thinking about different, go away children, daddy's thinking. 
God, actually, come to think of it, I wish I could introduce that into the family vocabulary. But I, I, it's not one I've been thinking about a lot. The more we we talk about it, the more feasible I think it is that this is an oil tanker that could actually be turned round. Um, I think Karen is definitely listening to a different show, although she's texting me, because she's now sent a message, and I presume it's the same Karen, I've got no way of checking, saying, women play a bit of snooker at the British Legion. So we started off with streakers at the rugby, and now we've got women playing a bit of snooker at the British Legion. I love messages that aren't meant for me normally. Sometimes I get things saying, like, can you pick up a tin of beans? I've got a doctor's appointment at quarter past twelve. And because our number is 84850... I think, how can they have got that wrong? But if you've got me saved in your phone, if you've got LBC saved in your phone, and you're trying to send a message to Les, for example, and you're just a bit clumsy like me, you accidentally go to LBC, type, can you pick up a tin of beans from Morrison's? I've got a doctor's appointment at 12.15. Go to the contact L, that, and you send it to LBC instead of sending it to Les. So I get messages um, which are which are pretty remarkable. Um, I think Vicky and Cathy are listening to the right programme, unlike Karen, uh, when she says the resolution of apartheid is an example. And, yeah, it didn't exactly happen overnight and in a very straightforward fashion, but I take your point, and Vicky talks about banning plastic bags. Well, they haven't been banned, Vicky, you can, but you have to pay for banning free plastic bags. Was there uproar about that? Would, would, would the usual suspects have either pretended or genuinely believed that that was an appalling affront upon their freedoms? Probably something in Magna Carta about plastic. But yeah, that probably is quite a good example. Banning free um, plastic bags from shops. Most, most shops. And congratulations to Oscar, who's been in touch to say, James, please could you get me a tin of beans on your way home from the studio? Six minutes after 12 at the time. So, what do you reckon? And I also want to hear from parents and others who think that it's an absolutely appalling idea to ban under-16s, either from owning smartphones or from accessing social media, because this is genuinely uh, in, in danger of... The pendulum's in danger of swinging so far in the opposite direction that it flies off like that time when Liz Truss... Was it Liz Truss who tried to ring a bell? Or was it Jeremy Hunt? Anyway, one of them tried to ring a bell and the, and the clacker. Is that what it's called, Keith? Is it a clacker inside a bell? What's it called? The bonger. No, that's, um, that's Silvio Berlusconi, isn't it? What is it, what, what is it called? The, the bunga? The bunga? The bunga? The clacker? i better stop now, because I'm going to accidentally say a swear word in a minute, and none of us would enjoy that. Jack's in heck. Jack, where were we? Uh, hey, James, how you doing? Very well, Jack. What do we think about these these issues? I think, um, I mean, I've, I've, I've worked in educational uh, setting, and I've worked with kids for fair part of the last decade and I completely agree that phones need to, that like, social media for certain definitely needs to be out of the hands of um, young people. I think that this policy that this lady has uh, proposed would only work in coordination with other, like, efforts. For example, the Department of Education would need to put very strong and clear like instructions that phones are to be collected at the start of school and returned at the end of school. Like parents who need to be advised, you know, from primary school, even before them, to say, look, we know we love the iPad, we know we love the phone, but this isn't good for your kids, and we now can see the damage is quite clear. What is the damage? Talk me through the damage. You're a teacher, are you, Jack? Yeah. Talk me through the damage. Um, everything, like any form of bullying, unfortunately, can be made worse by social media. Oh, yeah. you got kids who will unfortunately be victims of strangers you know certain schools might have to teach kids about things like airdrops because yeah. people might airdrop unsuitable uh, things to children um even things like unfortunately even things like upskirting pictures or videos yeah, but that's not social media oh, but, but that's sharing it on social media is the that's big, it, sorry that's it, that's, yeah, being a bit yeah, slow yeah. there forgive me jack yeah, because the problem is, is then it becomes a sense that if you're a bullied kid, your tormentor then doesn't stop at 3.15 when school ends. It, it, it goes on 24-7 and they're, they're finding things about you and posting them online, etc., etc. I, I can't see any benefit. And unfortunately for those who want to drive guess, safe. come from the other side of the argument, from an educational standpoint, there is such a marked difference between 
the kids who are always on their phones and social media and the kids whose parents may have seen one thing happen in school and say, no, give me the phone. Or, or at least exercise, exercise more discretion and control over what is happening yeah. on the phone and how often it is happening. Yeah, that's it, yeah. I, I, yeah. I, do you know what I've realised while you were talking? Hmm. I can't quite imagine what the other side would sound like here. A bit like during the smoking debate, when the only person mm. I can remember who was speaking out against banning smoking in pubs was Nigel Flipping Farage. I, I can't imagine a normal person, an ordinary normal person, listening to... And, and this is an invitation to them to ring in, by the way. An ordinary normal person who understands the importance of looking after others sitting here thinking, oh, what a load of old rubbish. Jack and James are talking absolute gibberish. My kids need their smartphone. I need my... Rah, rah. My life would be awful if I didn't have a smartphone when I was 14. Do you see what I mean? I can't quite see you. Yeah. Apart from the money that's made by the social media companies and the influence they accrue, who is going to be sitting there thinking this is a terrible idea? It's different from thinking this is really hard to do, which is a trap I fell into, but who's going to actually think this is a terrible idea? I, um, I, in my, in my experience and in my personal opinion, I think it might be a case that some people immediately say, like, well, I want my kids to be able to contact me on the way to and from school, to which I've always responded, buy them an old school phone, no apps, you know, like a Nokia old school phone that you can have the communications with. Certain people don't like to be told what to do. And at the end of the day, unfortunately, particularly when it comes to kids in school, I think maybe some people don't trust the schools or maybe they want the ability to contact their kids in the middle of the day, which again, from a uh, day-to-day running purpose, I you cannot stress do. to you enough how bad it is when people are getting phone calls in the middle of the day and next thing you know, you've got class, you teach everything fine, then you've got an emergency going on, you have no idea what's going on. Somebody's been said it's halfway into you trying to intervene. Oh, they got a message about this, or somebody sent this or that. There's no plus. Do you know, you'll find this very hard to believe, Jack. I used to be quite a, 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 an aggressive and occasionally even obnoxious radio presenter. And when we used to turn our attention to this question of kids having phones, before I had children of a relevant age, because I've been here for 20 years now, with them, I, I used to be incredibly dismissive. I was adamant that my children wouldn't have a phone until they were 37. And that any, pa- any, parent, any parent who gave their child a phone was, you know, akin to giving them 20 silk cut and a six-pack of Stella on a Friday night, even when they were nine. And I do, however, remember people citing that security issue with a phone and I would, I'd always point out, and, and they, to be serious for a moment, they would mention abduction, which is, of course, is something all parents live in mortal terror of, regardless of how unlikely it is to happen. And I, I did always point out that if, if, if your child was being abducted, it's unlikely that they would have the opportunity to uh, uh, phone you and, and tell you that it was happening. This is back in the day before smartphones, and now, of course, given the tracking capabilities on phones, uh, you, you, it's unlikely that... Time the, to get the job done. ...the criminal would... Um, uh, allow the child to keep the phone or not make sure that there was no phone on the child. So I'm not even sure. It's nice to know where they are, but that's actually just reassurance for the parent. It doesn't really guard against any particular security issues at all, I don't think. I don't well, think. I'm, I'm, a, I'm young enough or old enough, I think, <laughs> to uh, remember when I was in secondary school, I had, you know, a brick-type phone or whatever, but for me it was little things. Like, my mum would just call me or she would just say text me at you know four o'clock just so i know you're all right there are yes, other ways yes, of course. to check in with your kids other than a geolocating app or something because again then the argument becomes cool what happens when your kids on their phone all day at school and they don't have turn right and the phone doesn't work yeah anymore. Yeah, and then the panic kicks in, which wouldn't have kicked out. Goodness knows how my parents coped in the 1980s. Well, I was at boarding school a lot of the time, so it was not really relevant. But before I went away to boarding school, you wouldn't cat, you wouldn't hear from you all day. Go off on your bicycle at 9 o'clock in the morning with your sandwiches in your knapsack. And, uh, and, and back you'd come hours later with the parents having absolutely no way of checking up on you. Um, thank you, Jack. I, I, that was really helpful. And, and uh, that's a genuine invitation to people who, who can remind us what we're missing. Because otherwise, they should just ban them for under 16-year-olds now. Get them off, get them off, get them off, get them off social media. Um, which reminds me of Kara's text about streeters on the road. It's coming up to quarter past 12. We're listening to James O'Brien. Right. If you want to left. join this conversation, you can. I should tell you, coming up a little later in the programme, the new...
leader, uh, First Minister of Wales, Turn the Welsh left. First Minister, Vaughan Gething, will be joining me in the studio. Uh, the plan at the moment is only here for 14 minutes. It's not for him to take calls. But if there's anything particularly particular that you'd like me to ask him, then um, do get in touch in all the usual ways. And also, please, if you would, stop sending me hilarious messages about the importance of picking up some beans for you on the way home, or... Uh, in Luke's case, trying to emulate Karen's unintentional comedy by sending me messages uh, of, of questionable provenance. OK, it's 12.15. This is LBC. Are you or a loved one becoming increasingly forgetful, getting lost in familiar places, or struggling to plan or solve problems? These could be signs of early Alzheimer's disease. We are inviting people aged over 50 to join Dementia Research. By participating in research, you will get access to expert medical professionals who will guide you every step of the way, along with health check and regular clinic visits. Sign up now at stpancrasclinicalresearch.com. Good morning. Sign your parcel, please. Thanks. Fancy a cuppa? Um, I'm fine, actually. Sure. We just had a gorgeous kitchen fitted, midnight blue cupboards, quartz worktop, not to mention the boiling water tap. It won't take long. From design to installation, Wix create kitchens you can be really proud of. Get a range of great offers and interest-free credit when you buy a Wix bespoke kitchen. Be house proud with Wix. Terms and minimum spend apply. Wix is the credit broker. Credit provided by Navuna Personal Finance. James O'Brien on LBC. Call 0345 okay. 603 Max has been in touch. She says, uh, surely, James, if you'd been on LBC for 20 years, you would have had some sort of special anniversary day on air. <laughs> you know, I'd never thought of that, Max. I said, that. what an excellent pipe. No, come off it. Is that, maybe I'll do it for my 21st. Uh, Colin's in Wandsworth. Colin, what made you pick up the phone? Hi, James. Um, Hello, until my son was 13, yes. um, I had... Google had um, a parental control program on his phone and I had full control over his phone so he couldn't install any apps I didn't want, couldn't visit any websites I didn't want and anything he tried I got a notification asking me to approve it. The day he was 13 he got an email from Google saying you can now take over your account your parent will no longer have access. Shut the front door. They should change that to 16. Are you serious? Yeah. Uh, even now, I mean, I can still let the phone down, but obviously I've been in the last 30 years, I've got a lot of experience. Um, yeah, I've got some of that. And I'm sure Apple do the same thing with parental controls. Um, the electric control over everything he did, what times he could use it, how many hours a day he could use it, everything. Well, well it's very interesting. I didn't, I mean, I, I, I have to take your word for it uh, on, the, on the Google thing. Is that, are you nodding in, in agreement with what Colin's describing? Or is he to take his word? No, so it does, that's on your 13th birthday, you get a, So what was he logged on to? What was he... Uh, you basically set up a child account when you set the phone up, so you have to set it up as a parent, and then you've got control over it. And they have arbitrarily decided that 13 is the cut-off point, have they? Or is it legal? Yes. Or, or... Yeah, I contacted them and they said, yeah, 13 is their cut-off Well, point. working in the sector then, how hard would it be to stop the massive majority of 16-year-olds getting onto social media full stop? Easy. There's only two real phone companies, Apple and Google. They make... Not the software. The phones in the world, yeah, the software, so they control... The operating it. systems, to use the correct terminology, please, Colin. Yes. Right, Thank you. I do not want to it. Well, it's yeah. all right, mate. I'm not as oh. daft as I sound. <laughs> um, but, yeah, they're, they're, they control everything you can do on a phone. So, really, Apple and Google could control every, everything. So, so you, get, you get Apple and Google into, the, into Downing Street, you sit them down and you tell them, you do this, otherwise, for every day it's not done, we'll fine you £5 million. Pounds. Yeah, just, I mean, I'd only stop it on phones, obviously, not computers, but, um, why? yeah. Why? Just remind me why. Uh, because on a computer, I don't think you've got to set up your connections on a computer, if you change as well, which you could do also. But there's something about the phone. Gosh, please mind the speed. What were you worried about, or was it just a general So Did you have specific worries about it? No, no, nothing. Well, I mean, I, I still monitor what he does, so I don't have a problem with it, but, um... What, every single thing? Yeah. Okay. Because he's, uh, he's of an age. I told him I'd do it. He, he, he ain't got a problem with it. He's 14 at the moment. Can't he, um, go, um, can't he go on incognito? Unless he's listening to this, he probably doesn't know it exists. Oh, shut up, Colin. Seriously? How old well, is he, he now? Does. It doesn't matter. Incognito is not incognito anyway. It's just what they tell you. No, it's more incognito than not cognito. It's more incognito than cognito, Colin. 
to most parents it would be yes I, I, you can still find out what they visited and I'd still get a log of it because of what I've set up on it anyway what? so it wouldn't matter what? I'd get a log of every website that he visits because you've put different software onto his phone yeah OK. And I, I, everyone could do that. I didn't know that. I checked, actually. Eleanor checked. I, I didn't doubt you for a minute, but, yeah, Google's in... I've been cracking. 13-year-old gets a little message at a, a, a 13th birthday saying, right, tell your dad to sling his up. I, I'm in charge. <laughs> I'm the daddy now! This has been a great message. Colin, thank you. This is what I mean. I mean, no, this is what I mean. It's the more you talk about. Do you see what I mean? Gosh, it's like that. I've had one of these conversations before. But, Mr. Social media access for under six. Years. From a place of pity, concern, and compassion, you thought, oh, bless you. Please mind the speed. You're reminding to nothing. I don't think she is. I, and I mean, Colin's just crystallised it still further. You only need to get to me, Mr. Mr. Google. I'll tell them that if they don't do this now, and won't let the path up to the enemy of the good that they thought to you. That is the sign of children.
people who've got the biggest budgets in the world. Cash caught up with his mind is scanning. Why the films have eight? Presenting yourself are uh, two big providers of the service online. They can put measures in place to prevent you from doing so. So, t- so, so, gambling. Let's talk about gambling websites. How do they work? How do you manage to stop 18 year olds from getting on a gambling website? Well, you don't, you don't have to pay for something. You open the account before you pay. Please mind the speed limit. But you can't gamble, though, can you? If, even if you can open an account. Of course you can. And, and the point is that... You can make your dad's credit card. How can you gamble if you have... Well, OK, but that, but that applies to anything else as well, doesn't it? If you see, it's actually saying, else, this, this, this caller doesn't understand what a VPN is. Stay right, and then turn right. I certainly do understand what a VPN is. A VPN is on a free or charge. I mean, so, I mean, the point is, you, you can represent yourself as being... Richard says, being, God, I'll turn right. right. <laughs> You voted Brexit, didn't you? That's very unfair. But but why can't we do on social Sorry, media? Me. Why can't we do on social media companies what, what what we do on gambling companies? Just just in a, in a sense. I'm an absolute. I'm an absolute man. <laughs> why can't we do on Facebook what we do on gambling companies? Because it won't work. It can't. But it work. works on gambling companies. But all the, all the oh. privacy pr- campaigners are against this, aren't they? What They're you against mean all the privacy it. campaigners are against If you look, well, if you look at the online safety bill, all the things that flow from that, all the privacy campaigners are against it. What you have is... I don't know what you're talking about. Which is not... In, I'm sure that's my fault. In relation to authentication. In relation to authentication. Well, who, who are the privacy, the privacy campaigners? Who do you mean? But we live through our, we live, we live through, I'm terrible at this. I don't, do you remember, I don't know which, whether you had this, but if I needed a new cricket bat, always try and get my dad to take me, which was hard because dad's job took him away a lot. And he, 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 you know, but if mum took me, I'd get, I'd get the one that came free with a tin of Castor TTX, right. but dad always wanted me to have good stuff. And, yep. and, I, yep. and, and that, Turn I right. think we do that with phones, don't we? We want our kids to, I mean, you didn't, obviously, but I think a lot of parents just want their kids to have the good stuff. They do, but then I think there's, I think there's um, a room for a sort of savvy, a sort of teenage phone. And if parental power 
was there and purchasing power was there to Turn say, right. we want our kids to have a nice phone, because his was a bit rubbish, to be yeah. honest. Yeah. Um, but is there a version of the phone that could be restricted and locked down in some way? Because the other thing I couldn't do on that phone is I couldn't put the tracker apps on it. And there were various things that I would have liked to be able to do on that phone. I, 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 I think it's chicken and egg. I, don't, I think it's going to be getting the social media companies to police the age of people getting online rather than yeah. changing the nature of the technology in their pocket. And then as a parent, you might say, well, look, if you're not using it, so there's some stuff you can use it for. Get like, ready get, to I mean, turn good left. games, as much as I enjoyed Snake. Turn it's left. not exactly Call of Duty, is no. it? It's, it's, no. it's not exactly up there with Angry Birds or whatever else it might be now. Um, you, 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 get, you get it from, from the other end. How, how did he change? Did he did he fall into any rabbit holes when he got a smartphone? Um, no, he, no, he didn't, actually. He was a bit of a caution. Yeah, he was a bit of a caution. lined up for today. Listen, pal, I may not look like the young stallion I once was, but I'm still fit as a fiddle, I'll have you know. No, no, Harry, that's not what I meant. I'm not even that old. I do boxes like three times a week, and my trainer says... No, I meant the horses. Your nap, your Napoleon, your best bet. Oh, well, you should have said that. My best bet would be to head over to Bet Victor and check out the latest offers they have on the horses. Listen, make your best bet on the races. at Bet. 18 plus be capital away. This is LBC. Message Drinks O'Brien on WhatsApp now on 0345 6060 
but it, it, it's usually, I think it popped up at the point where we're complaining about black people just living or existing or being in their apartment block, even though they live there as well. Um, and that, that said, to, to Eleanor, so of course there's a world for my own account, and that, and that world is I mean, a fairly uh, strong Anglo Saxon Anyway, I digress slightly. Is there a world for someone that brings a radio show and has to speak to the producer before they get onto the radio programme proper? You know, before they get to really see the rabbit. And says to them, with a straight face, as someone just did to Eleanor, with all due respect, I think my hourly rate is much higher than yours. What word would you use for a man who said, is there a word for that kind of thing? No, you can't say that on the radio, Keith. Is, is there like a, is there any kind of a camera for someone who rings in and dares to speak to Roxy or to a subtle advertising and condescending fashion me. and is too sick to realise whatever their hourly rate would be, that it's something that is insulting me. Please mind the speaker. Please Good. 
caution. Please mind the speed limit. about the meaning of of the words overprotective, which you're comfortable with, and so we will, I think, leave it at that. But, I, I, I mean, crikey, I, I just as someone a little bit further down the road of life than you, uh, the kids I was at school with whose parents didn't let them do anything at all were the ones that went absolutely crackerjack when they went away to college. Um, and, in fact, the kids I was at college with who went absolutely crackerjack were the ones who'd had the... I mean, partly boarding school, actually, would be some of them, where you couldn't do any of the things that children at normal schools 
could do, so they'd go off uh, on, on... So that's all. Uh, that's just, just a, a little word of um, uh, observation. And as Tom says, just because you're paranoid doesn't mean that they're not out to get you. Uh, thank you, Harry. Asha's in Hendon. Asha, what would you like to say? Hello, Asha. Oh, God, that was a long call. You had... Long it, I tell you what, it was, I think it felt a lot longer than it was, actually, Asha, yeah. but on you go. Um, it, yeah, I, I, it's so difficult, isn't it? Because I think you're, you're right on what you just said in your last comment. Um, it's difficult to keep them too sheltered and too, you know, you're too strict. It can also go the other way. Tell me about um, it. But I do also agree with what a lot of your previous callers have said. So you have to, it's just trying to find that balance. And I've only got one child, so I've got no previous experience. I've got no idea what I'm doing half the time. Yeah, you do. And it, it's really difficult because, so my daughter turned 11 last summer and she was going to start high school in September. I got her a smartphone. She'd been asking for ages and I had my old phone. I upgraded her, but I can't give her my old phone. And it's quite good because the battery keeps running out. So that's nice. Um, so she's got the, the phone. It's a smartphone. Got a number and everything. Um, and one of your previous callers, um, sorry, also said about this Google thing, which is brilliant. Um, and have you used that? Have you signed up yeah, to it? Yeah, Do you know, yeah, it's different yeah, in every yeah, country. It's, it's, di- it's different it's in brilliant. every country. So what, what, I mean, I think when you talk about how difficult it is to get it right, you, you kind of want the decision taken away from you. If your children were literally not allowed to have access to social media until they were 16, they can't even blame you for it, Asha. Yeah, so that's what, that's what I think. But if it was there, it would be so easy to say to her, you're not allowed. I mean, I do... She okay, has, the only thing she's got on her phone route. at the moment is WhatsApp and everything else... That's that's pretty, that's well, WhatsApp well, can be tricky, can't know, it? Because you, get, you don't get invited into groups or you can yeah, see that... Yeah, I think... Um, I mean, it's because I kind of, I check, I don't know if this is a good thing to admit, but I do check her phone all the time. I check her messages, I read her messages. She's got an email, which she never She's 11. I think that's absolutely fine. I, so I fact, read everything. But, yeah, I don't know. I don't know how It sounds to me you 